I feel so lucky to have come across this teaching and um, uh, over the last seven or so years uh, the changes that it's brought about in my life are ongoing and uh, also completely beyond my wildest dreams. And um, what's even better about that is how effortless it is. Um, that, the, that I don't have to do anything. <laughs> and uh, from the first uh, talk that I went to, uh, I was lucky enough to um, find myself walking into an open meeting with Candice in India and from the first talk she activated this instinctive recognition in my experience that there's nothing to do in order to uh, arrive at a fully potentiated life of benefit and well-being. And uh, this is so in contrast to what I had learned before that, and uh, so in contrast to what generally we learn in society. There's all kinds of things we have to do. <laughs> we have to not be afraid, we have to not uh, be awkward. <laughs> We have to not be uncool. We have to be confident. We have to be cool. We have to be comfortable. We have to, um, what else? I could just sit here for the rest of my life listing things. Um, and um, what Candice helped me to see and has helped me to see with more and more assurance through her skillful means both as a teacher and also as um, the founder of an entire support structure which uh, I have taken advantage of that increasingly I just don't feel any internal pressure to be any, any particular way. And um, the more assured in that I become, the more clear to me is that that's what I always wanted. That's um, what I always hoped to arrive at by successfully being this, uh, you know, perfect person who never feels certain things, never feels jealous, never feels envious, never feels scared, never feels stressed, never feels annoyed. <laughs> the reason why I wanted to never feel those things is because I thought if I could arrive at that, that I would then have nothing else that needed to be done. So um, Candice introducing me to, and everybody that day, to the fact that nothing needs to be done <laughs> was like arriving. And um, she said that everything about your experience is the already complete beneficial intelligence of nature the open intelligence of nature. And that just makes sense, doesn't it? Make, doesn't that make sense? <laughs> everything is the intelligence of nature, including everything that we are, even the most personal, you know, everything that we consider to be our thoughts, our emotions, that we're so uh, insistent on needing to control and have be a certain way. Um, it's the intelligence of nature.
and it's um, kind of odd, <laughs> uh, preposterous, to think that something needs to be done about that. <laughs> and so, <clears throat> if we rely for short moments, repeated many times, on this instinctive recognition of open intelligence, the intelligence of nature that pervades every single moment of our experience, not, not um, theoretically, but instinctively and directly as our experience ha is happening, we allow ourselves to recognize that it, that it is the dynamic unfolding of open intelligence, the intelligence that pervades everything. And increasingly we find that we feel more and more um, less and less at odds with everything as it is. And this whole uh, heartbreaking strife and struggle of needing to control the way we feel all the time. It's, um, it's completely useless to do that. <laughs> it's not possible. You can't do it. So it's just disappointment after disappointment after disappointment after disappointment. <laughs> and sometimes you feel like maybe you're doing Maybe you're starting to manage to do it, you know, like, oh yeah, you know, it kind of feels good now in my intimate relationship, and the other one also feels good, and yeah, it's going okay at work, and I don't really seem to feel jealous at the moment. And but then, um, yeah, even though that, even though. <laughs> Even though you've had that happen many times, you kind of think, okay, maybe this time, maybe this time, I've fixed it. You know, everything is arranged. My emotions are arranged. My thoughts are arranged. They're all put in the right boxes, and I don't feel, you know, too out of place. And I seem to enjoy, and I've got these friends, and. Uh, and then suddenly you start feeling jealous, or you start feeling um, depressed. And then again, ah, oh, disappointment. Damn, I thought I'd done it this time. <laughs> so then you're thinking about why, why am I depressed? What's happened? Did I eat the right food? Did I get up too late? Did I get up too early? Did I watch too many episodes of Breaking Bad last night? <laughs> Desperately trying to find the cause for the depression, um, because the the strategy is if I can find the cause to ever th to depression or other things that's wrong with my experience, <coughs> then I can just eradicate that cause and then I won't feel it anymore. That's the isn't that the strategy? <laughs> So then you think, okay, so tonight I won't watch as many episodes of Breaking Bad. I'll get up at this particular time. I'll eat alfalfa sprouts for breakfast. <laughs> so you have all these wonderful plans. And then the, the depression is just so elusive. You don't even know, okay, so I've eaten my alfalfa sprouts. Am I now not depressed anymore? And you can't really tell necessarily. <laughs> And if you really look at it, you don't even know what you mean by depression. <laughs> so it's uh, just like a random combination of physical sensations and maybe certain thoughts and emotions. All the while, nature is peacefully unfolding, as it always has, <laughs> without any problem, without any, without any problem whatsoever. So it's all to do with our understanding of the nature of our own mind. This is the, uh, the juncture from which a life of misery can stem or a life of wonderful benefit can stem. The juncture is 
the understanding of the nature of mind or the misunderstanding of the nature of mind. And so that's what we focus on in this teaching is to introduce and support the instinctive recognition of the nature of mind, the all-pervading purity of mind, stability of mind, all-pervading. It's always been like that, just like a mirror has always been pure of its reflections. All there is is the mirror, and similarly, all there is is mind, a stable, pure space, cognizant space, cognizant alert space. And uh, if we're open to being supported uh, to recognize this with the, with the support that's available here, then we just find that life gets better and better, and that's just the way it is. <laughs> better and better, and we find that we're increasingly able to live life like we always knew we were able to, powerfully and beneficially. So thank you so much, everyone.